Hey y'all, in this video we'll be looking at a topic in Python called list comprehensions. Now list comprehensions can be a topic that's more specific to Python than other coding languages you may have studied in the past. And in my experience teaching it, it's also something that students often struggle with at first. So I wanted to take this video and just break down list comprehension fully, look at a bunch of different examples where we use list comprehension to achieve various goals, and then we'll finish with some considerations like is it faster or slower than using a for loop? And when are some cases we might not want to use list comprehension even? So to get started, at a very high level, list comprehension is a tool in order to take a source list. In our case, our source list is going to be called students. And this source list students contains each element, a list. And each element basically encodes information about a student. So the name, Harry, GPA, the year, and true or false, whether the student is in-state or not in-state. So list comprehension will be able to take this list of students and do various transformations. For example, the first thing we'll look at is, how do I take this list of students and extract just the name of each student? Another thing we might look at is, how do I just get the GPA of each student who is in-state or who is out of state? So at a high level, list comprehension is used to take a source list, do some conditionals on it maybe, and then get some returned values, some extract some information from it. It'll be more clear when we do our examples. Before we jump into the examples, I want to look at the anatomy of a list comprehension. Because for me, this is how I decide how to write a list comprehension step by step, rather than wondering about how to write it. There's four big parts, each one is in its own quotations. And I'll go through the order you want to think about it. The first thing you want to think about when you write a list comprehension is, what is my source list? For the first many examples we do today, our source list will be the students list, but you need to decide what your source list is. The next one is, as I iterate over my source list, what do I want each item to be called? Usually it makes sense to call it something that makes sense in context, like student. So I might write for student in students. If you're dealing with a list of like animals on a farm, you might say for animal in animals, if animals is your source list. The third part is the condition. So condition basically says that I only want to consider that element of my source list if something about it is true. Um, if it's a list of numbers, maybe it's like if it's greater than five, or if it's even, or if it's odd. In our case, maybe we want to say only if the student is in state, only if they're out of state, certain things like that. And the final thing I think about in a list comprehension is the return value, which is given that that element of my source list has passed the condition, what do I want to do to that element in order to transform it into its final value? So maybe assuming the student is in state, I want to get the length of their name, how many characters in their name, or I want to get their GPA, or I want to get their year plus one to see what their year would be next year. So that's a lot of kind of hypothetical talk. Let's go into some examples and see how this formula, this formulaic idea of list comprehension works in practice. First goal, get the name of every student. This is simple enough. So we're going to create a new list called names, and this is the bit that's a list comprehension. So let's go through the four parts again. In this case, there's actually only three because there's no condition notice. So I'm saying for each student in students, so you can think of this as a for loop that's basically iterating over every student in my source list. And each time it visits a student, it's aliasing that or giving a nickname to that element as student. So the first time this for loop goes, it basically is looking at this student, Harry. And what are we doing with it? we're getting student at index zero. If I look at Harry, or this student who's called Harry at index zero, I get exactly the name Harry because that's the zeroth element or the element at index zero of that list. Now the next time it goes, it visits the next student, which is this, I get the zeroth element, which is Ron. So you can see that as I do that for every student, names ends up being exactly the list of names of all the students I have. So hopefully that was a good introduction into how to get started with list comprehension. Let's do something more complicated. What if we want to get the length of the name of each student? This list comprehension looks pretty much the same. It's just that I say, I want the len of student zero, which is the name. And in that way, I get a list of integers, which is the length of the name of each student. Now let's get a little bit more complicated. Now introducing that if condition, that conditional get the name of every student who is a fourth year. Notice the first part of this list comprehension looks the same. We're still saying for every student in students, 
But now the third part we visit is only consider that student if student at index two is equal to four. What does that do? Well, if I look at a student, like let's say I'm looking at Ron here, index two would be this element here, because remember zero based indexing starts at zero Ron, one 2.7 index two is this number two, which corresponds to the year of the student. So I'm saying only consider students where the year is equal to four. That's exactly my goal, only fourth years. And what do I wanna do if the student meets that condition? Get student zero, which is the name. So in that way, I only get fourth years, Dumbledore and Snape. Let's do another example. Get every fourth year or in-state student. So this is basically the same. My condition is basically just slightly more complicated. Now I'm saying, consider that student if their year is equal to four or their in-state status, which is the last element of the student's list, is equal to true. If they meet that condition, so either their fourth year or in-state, then I get that student back. Notice here, I didn't ask for the student's name. I just get the entire row of the students. So what I'm left with is all the fourth years or um, in-state students. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about, so that was the basics of this comprehension, the four parts of it. So go through those examples again if you have to. Now I'll talk about nested list comprehensions, which is one layer further. So nested list comprehensions, although this looks scary, we can go through it step by step again. So again, I'm saying for each student in students, so I'm basically iterating over all of my students again. Now the thing I'm returning is actually itself a list. So here's the return value, which itself is a list comprehension. So the first time I go over for each student in students, the first student I look at is this guy. So this list right here. What do I want to do with that? I want to iterate over it. I would like to iterate over it and get the type of each item that is in that list. So I do that for each student and I get string, float, int, bool for each of my students. And why do I get that? Well, when I visit this student, for example, it gets the type of Harry, which is string. It gets the type of 3.5, which is float. It gets the type of three, which is int, and the type of true, which is Boolean. And that's why I get string, float, int, bool for every single one of my students. So this is called nested list comprehension because we do a list comprehension within the context of a broader list comprehension. So that's something you might see. Now we're done with the student's example for now. We'll be looking at how to generate lists of numbers based on other lists of numbers. So this is also a context you'll see list comprehension often used in. What if I wanna get the square of each even integer between two and 10? So my source list here is going to have to be all of the integers between two and 10, uh, all the even integers between two and 10. And I can achieve that using this range function in Python. So range can take up to three arguments. The first is the starting point, the number two. The last is the ending point, which is not included. So we're actually ending at the number 10. So we put in 11. And the last is the step. So this is basically generating the numbers two, four, six, eight, and 10. And for each of those numbers, so I'm calling each of those numbers aliased by i. What do I wanna do? I wanna get the square. So I'm gonna take i squared. What that does is gives me two squared, four squared, six squared, eight squared, and 10 squared, which is exactly what I wanted. The last example we'll look at before looking at some other considerations is maybe the hardest one and also the one where I could borderline say that maybe it makes more sense to write a for loop because this is not super intuitive to understand. So the goal is to flatten the following matrix. So M is a matrix, which is three by three. The first row is one, two, three, then it's four, five, six, then it's seven, eight, nine. So I want to flatten it. So my goal is to end up with something that looks like this, which is just the numbers one through nine in a single list. This is the list comprehension that achieves that. It looks simple enough, but if you look at it for a while, it's maybe confusing what's going on. I wanna break it down for you, again, in the context of the anatomy of a list comprehension we looked at. We're going to begin by saying for each row in M. So M itself is a list which contains three elements. The first is this list, the next is this list, the last is this list. So row is actually just each row of the matrix. Now, what do I wanna do for each row of the matrix? I wanna iterate again for each item in the row. So if I'm looking at this row, then the second bit of the list comprehension, the second four part, basically just says that for each item in that row, so now I'm saying for one, then two, then three, 
And what do I want to do? I want to just grab that item. So that's why this achieves the goal of flattening that matrix, because I visit each row, which is this part, and then I visit each item of the current row I'm looking at, which is this part. And lastly, I just get that item and add it to the list that I'm building. So I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I gave this example not because I think it's something you'll see really often, but it's kind of something I personally consider as borderline. Maybe you just want to write a for loop instead because it's not super easy to understand. And even if you understand it, if you're working at a company or working with other people, um, writing something like this in your code base may not be the best in terms of like understanding for everybody who's working on your product or your um, project. So there's always trade-offs, right? Like list comprehensions allow us to write compact and as we'll see in a second, sometimes a little bit faster code, but sometimes they're not as understandable. So you need to make that call for yourself. The last thing we'll look at here is time considerations. So one big question is these list comprehensions are often more compact to write and they can make sense if they're not too complicated, but are they any faster or slower than writing a for loop that achieves the same exact thing? Let's do a quick experiment here. This is not going to be conclusive because this is just one example, but we'll see a pattern you may see there here and there. So here's the same list comprehension from above, the fourth year or in state. And I also did notice that I reassigned the students list here. So I actually just ran the first cell again. So students looks the same as above. So if I do the list comprehension way, it takes about 2.13 microseconds. So if you didn't know, in Jupyter Notebook, you can put this percent percent time it at the top of any code cell, and it'll just run that code cell many, many, many times and give you the average and standard deviation, which is very cool. So we see that the list comprehension way takes about 2.13 microseconds and 50 nanoseconds standard deviation. If we write the full loop, so here's the full loop where we define uh, target list, basically empty. We manually loop over all the students, manually check that condition here, and then if that condition is met, we append that student into our uh, list. So this is going to achieve the same exact goal. If I do a time it on that, it takes a little bit longer on average, 2.76 microseconds, but maybe the bigger part to notice here is the standard deviation is around 400 nanoseconds, which is much higher. So it's not only taking a little bit longer, it's also much more variable. So we see that list comprehensions in many cases can actually speed up your code by a little bit, not any crazy speed up like with vectorization or other types of things that we'll look at or have looked at, but it can give marginal speed ups here and there. And the general reason is that list comprehension allows the compiler to kind of take advantage of certain patterns that it can see, whereas a for loop doesn't necessarily give that chance to the compiler. So list comprehensions can make your code a little bit faster, can make your code a little bit less variable as we saw with the standard deviations, but you need to make a judgment call about when to use it. If it's way too complicated for anyone to understand, including yourself in six months when you go look at your code, maybe just write the for loop. So that was a introduction to list comprehensions. If you have any questions at all, please go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And please like and subscribe for more videos like this. See you next time.